creating simple animations extremely easy with a slide transition called Magic Move. So I have my initial slide, I go up here to animate, and it's gonna animate the transition. So I click Magic Move, and now I'm gonna copy and paste this slide. Almost anything that I change on the second slide will be automatically and seamlessly animated when the slide transitions. I'm gonna speed this next part up, but you can change the color, you can change the size, you can change the orientation. And then we go back to the first slide, to the Animate tab, and let's preview what it looks like. Okay, looks pretty good. I'm gonna make it a little bit slower. Okay, that's just right. To see what it'll look like in presentation mode, go up to the Play button and use your arrow key to move to the next slide. Magic Move also works for text. I'm going to speed the video up here, but I'm going to layer the 8 on top of the 40, and you'll notice that I'm going to create a white fill on the back of the 8 so that it covers up the 0 when I put it on top of the 40. I'm going to copy the 40 and the 8 together, Command C, and then on the next slide, Command V to paste it. And now I'm going to separate it, and it will animate this from slide to slide. All right, let's see what that looks like. Back to Animate, Preview, and it separates. I want to illustrate the decomposing that's happening during this animation, so I'm going to go to one of my old slides. I'm going to copy my number bond, and I'm going to paste it onto the second slide where I can line it up with my numbers. Then I'm going to click on the number bond. I'm going to copy it and paste it back on the first slide, and it's going to keep it in the same place that it was on the second slide. But I'm going to move it down a little bit so that it's going to move up as the slide transitions. Let's see what that looks like. That looks good. I just showed you the transition between slides, but you can also animate objects on one individual slide. So I've clicked one object, so now instead of transition animation, it's a build-in animation for this one object. So I could select Dissolve. Okay, it's going to dissolve in. And for this one, I'm going to select Wipe. And for the word Math, I'm going to have it move in. But instead of from the left, I want it from the bottom. Okay, just like that. I can click play to preview I'm using the right arrow key to move these along and they appear separately. If I want, I can go to the button build order and I can choose each one and choose when it happens or if it happens with another one. So I'm going to have these all happen at the same time. So I said with build one, build one is the triangle. Click on the word math and with build one also. That way they'll all happen at the same time. Let's preview. Yep, that's what I wanted. I often find animating individual objects very tedious, and it's hard to line them up and get them just right. And you can't use these animations on individual objects during a transition. So let me show you how to use Magic Move to achieve the same results. I'm going to copy and paste this slide. And then on the first slide, uh, I don't want the triangle to appear, so I'm going to delete it. Math is going to come from the bottom, so it needs to start down here. And I'm going to cover this object with a white square, and that way I can move the white square off the screen to reveal the blue shape. So on the second slide, I'm going to need a copy of that white rectangle. So I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to move it off screen. Then let's go back to the first slide. Go up to Animate, add Magic Move, and there we go. Let's take a look at creating some math animations now. 
In the template that you can download, I've included a 100 array that's ungrouped and one that is grouped. The grouped one is easier to resize and to copy, so here I'm copying it, and I'm gonna undo what I just did. And now I'm holding down Shift to resize it. It's a quick way to get the circles the size that you want them. Then you can ungroup it, and you can edit it. So I'm gonna copy this array, and I'm gonna to go to a new slide. And I'm gonna paste it here. But I don't need 100, I'm gonna have a six by six array, so I'm going to delete and move it to this side. For this animation, I'm thinking about comparing two squares and then revealing the squares that are inside of those squares. I'm gonna copy and paste this slide. And on the second slide, I'm gonna rearrange the dots so that they'll animate moving outwards. To the first slide, add magic move, and there they go. I want my students to compare this to a different array and its movement. So I'm going to copy and paste the second slide, but then I'm gonna go back to the first one and grab that array and paste it and move it over to the other side. To make it easier to differentiate during the discussion, I'll change it to red. I'm copying and pasting the third slide to create the fourth slide, and I'm on the fourth slide and I wanna reveal a different square that's inside of this array. So I select these and I move them down. And I select these, I'm holding down Command while I click to select multiple objects. Now I can move these up. Okay, let's go back to the previous slide, add some magic move and see what it looks like. Oh, that's not what we want. This happens often if you're using a lot of the same type of object. The computer has trouble figuring out which ones are moving from one slide to the next. However, we can group one of the sets of objects to help make it more clear what's moving from one slide to the next. So I select these, I group them. I'm gonna copy and paste this onto the next slide, but first I need to delete these that are not in a group. I paste the ones that are grouped and I move them where I want them, and that should clear up the confusion. Let's go back and let's preview the animation. Much better. Let's check it out from the beginning. In class, I would ask my students to notice what is the same and different about these two animations. I press the left arrow keys to go back to restart the animation and the right arrow keys to progress through the animation. Okay, time for a tip and a trick. Uh, let's talk about the tip first. If you're creating an animation, sometimes it's easier to start with the end in mind. So in this case, I wanna create something that looks like this, where you're counting up from zero up to 20. And instead of starting from the beginning and, and animating each step from the beginning, I start at 20, and I work in reverse. So I add magic move, I copy and paste it, and then I'm creating the slide that shows 19, so I'm dragging one off. I copy and paste the slide of 19, and I create the slide of 18. And I continue this until I get all the way down to zero, and when I play it back, it's going to show counting up. Now, time for the trick. Oftentimes you're gonna need a workaround to create a more complicated animation in Keynote since it wasn't necessarily built for what we're using it for. So I'm gonna show you where I wanna take this animation and, and the problem that often occurs and how I fix it. Let's say that I wanna stack these so the kids will start to notice how the five and 10 structure are similar. 
When I use magic move on this, that's obviously not what we want. And I'll show you how to fix that in a moment. But first, let me show you where I'm going to go after this. The next slide, I'm going to select all of these on the right side. I'm going to hold down Command, and I'm going to deselect the tens frame. Deselect. Deselect. That way I can just move these off. I'm going to change them to blue. I'm going to select the dots on the other side, hold down Command and deselect the tens frame so you can move off just the dots. Okay, this is where I wanted to go. Slide one, slide two, and slide three. But let's go back to this problem that we had. I'm going to label each slide. So this is slide one, slide two, and slide three. I call this the extra slide trick. Right now the problem is between slide one and slide two. So I'm going to make an exact copy of slide one and put it after slide one. But there's going to be no transition effect between slide one and slide two so that I can group them secretly. And then I'm also going to group the things on slide two so that when I magic move between the extra slide and slide two, it will be smooth. So here I've copied slide one, but this is actually the extra slide. And then I'm going to group the tens frame. And then I'm going to group this tens frame. And then I'm going to go back to slide one and choose none as the transition so that it appears as if nothing has happened when I click next. Now, onto slide two, I'm going to group it so that it lines up with the extra slide that I've created. Now let's go back and take a look. I click play. Now I'm going to click right. Nothing's going to seem to happen. But then when I click next again, it animates smoothly because the extra slide and slide two both have the grouped tens frames. But now, between slide two and slide three, it fades in and out because it doesn't recognize that those are the same objects. So, I'm gonna have to do the same thing that I did but in reverse. Now the problem is between slide two and slide three, it fades in and out. So I'm gonna make a copy of slide two with no transition effect. I'm gonna ungroup them so that when I magic move to slide three, it shows the animation I want. So here's slide two, I copy and I paste it. Now this is an extra slide. And I'm going to ungroup these so that when I play it, it's a smooth transition. Don't forget that between slide two and the extra slide after it, there should be no transition. Okay, let's go back and see what it looks like. And there we go. One last little piece of information you should know is that the curved lines will always fade in and out between magic move transitions. So instead of creating a curved line this way, let me show you a different way. You can create a regular line and right click on it and click make editable and these little dots will appear and you can move them around to change the shape of the line. These will act normally during a magic move transition. Thank you so much for joining me today. You can connect with me on Twitter. You can email me, and I'd love to see what you come up with. Thanks a lot.